Hello, my name is Andrew White, the current Minimally Invasive Fellow at Wake Forest Baptist Hospital, and today I will be discussing our experience with POEM for the treatment of epiphrenic diverticulum. I have nothing to disclose. Epiphrenic diverticulum can be related to an underlying esophageal motility disorder such as achalasia. This is typically treated with heller myotomy with simultaneous diverticulectomy. However, at our institution, we have discussed management of epiphrenic diverticulum with only myotomy to decrease the complications that are associated with the diverticulectomy and had good outcomes. There are some centers that are attempting to manage epiphrenic diverticulum with POEM. At our institution, we have performed POEM for two patients with epiphrenic diverticulum with good results. Our first patient we managed was an 84-year-old male who presented to our clinic with worsening dysphagia to solid foods over the past year. He also endorsed regurgitation, epigastric pain, and nausea. He was taking a once daily proton pump inhibitor and Tums as needed for his symptoms. Of note, he also had a history of dysphagia and underwent a local endoscopy with dilation in 2012 with no evidence of esophageal diverticulum at that time. Prior to his clinic visit, he already had an esophagram performed, which revealed a large, wide mouthed, right sided diverticulum as well as some retained contrast in the esophagus with mild esophageal dysmotility. He also already had esophageal monometry performed, which revealed findings consistent with jackhammer esophagus and an elevated LES pressure with the appropriate relaxation. He had a number of endoscopy performed, which revealed a 4 centimeter wide-mouthed epiphrenic diverticulum just proximal to the LES. Endoflip was performed, which was consistent with achalasia. We discussed with the patient his options of heller myotomy versus palm. Given his monometry findings of jackhammer esophagus and the length of myotomy required, we elected to proceed with palm. On our initial endoscopy, you can again appreciate the diverticulum just proximal to the GE junction. A mucosal lift 12 cm proximal to the GE junction was created. A mucosal incision was then performed to the anterior portion of the esophagus. The submucosal tunnel was safely entered. The tunnel was continued distally in the submucosal plane. We frequently checked our tunnel location to ensure that it was not extending into the mouth of the diverticulum. The submucosal tunnel got more difficult to create and more narrow at the level of the epiphrenic diverticulum and GE junction. A retroflex view in the stomach was performed to ensure that the submucosal tunnel had extended onto the proximal stomach. The myotomy was then started by cutting the circular muscle fibers 10 centimeters proximal to the GE junction. The myotomy was continued down to the fundus of the stomach. After the myotomy was completed, the submucosal space was wider at the location of the epiphrenic diverticulum and GE junction. The completion endoscopy revealed no change to the epiphrenic diverticulum and that the GE junction was easier to traverse.
At a six-week postoperative visit, his dysphagia had significantly improved and he was tolerating a regular diet with a nine pound weight gain in six weeks. He was able to stop his proton pump inhibitor and denied any reflux symptoms. A postoperative esophagram performed at six weeks revealed a similar size and appearance of the epiphrenic diverticulum with slightly improved motility of the esophagus. Briefly, our second case was an 82-year-old male who presented to clinic with a large epiphrenic diverticulum to the left posterior esophagus. He had complaints of four years of slight dysphagia and a single episode of upper GI bleeding. He was taken to the OR and underwent a successful palm. He was seen in clinic three weeks postoperatively with improved dysphagia symptoms and no episodes of bleeding. In conclusion, palm for treatment of epiphrenic diverticula may be an appropriate treatment plan, although more studies are required. We are still monitoring our long-term results and plan to have regular follow-up with patients in clinic to evaluate for return of their symptoms. We also plan to obtain future esophagrams to monitor the regression or progression of the diverticulum.